This informational video of the Missouri River Fish and Wildlife Mitigation Project and the development of shallow water habitat along the river is brought to you by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in partnership with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Natural Resources Conservation Service, Missouri Department of Conservation, the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission, and the Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks. The development of shallow water habitat on the Missouri River is only taking place on selected portions of publicly owned land within a 735 mile stretch from Sioux City, Iowa to St. Louis, Missouri. Currently, there are approximately 32 mitigation sites within this 735 mile long river corridor flowing through Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, and Missouri. These individual publicly owned parcels of land are spread out along the entire river, representing about 25% of the overall mitigation program. It's the string of pearls concept. Individual parcels of land purchased from willing sellers at fair market value, collectively forming a discontinuous string of pearls along the Missouri River. The individual mitigation sites are the basis for the re-establishment of a viable Missouri River ecosystem. This informational video provides an overview of the project, focusing on the development of shallow water habitat, ideal for fish and wildlife. The video demonstrates the development of a typical mitigation site on the Missouri River to show the change from an agricultural use to fish and wildlife habitat. The Missouri River Fish and Wildlife Mitigation Project, enhancing the quality of life and ensuring resources for everyone's use along the Missouri River. The Army Corps of Engineers is undertaking a project to restore fish and wildlife habitat along the Missouri River. Over the years, fish and wildlife habitats along the river have been lost due to attempts to control the river's channel and stabilize its banks. As seen in this 1928 aerial photograph, before the Missouri River was modified to safeguard navigation and stabilize the river banks, it meandered across the broad floodplain. Originally, it was a dynamic environment where natural river processes took place, continuously changing the river channel and habitat that consisted of numerous islands, channels, chutes, sandbars and slack water that supported various types of habitats, great wildlife diversity, and an abundant fishery. Early explorers Lewis and Clark, who charted the river in the early 1800s, would not recognize much of the lower Missouri River today. Efforts to make the river safer for navigation began in the early 1800s with the removal of snags and wrecks. At that time, the navigation channel was extremely unreliable. Also, the river could meander across the floodplain. Often during a single flood event, the river would change course. This free-flowing river endangered all land and infrastructure and limited man's use of the floodplain. In the later years of the 1800s, Major Charles Sutter came up with a plan to use the natural power of the river to scour out and create a fixed main channel. Sutter's men constructed dikes from wooden piles. These were placed in a way that did not fight the flow of the water, but slowed it, allowing sediments to drop in selected areas. The U.S. Congress made the decision to stabilize the Missouri River banks and improve navigation. Bank stabilization and channelization increased during the early 1900s, and variations of Sutter's plan have been implemented over the years, which have created the Missouri River we see today. The Missouri River now flows through a well-defined channel. As you can see in this animation, the present river configuration is overlaid on a 1928 aerial photograph. There have been dramatic changes in the river. Prior to channelization of the Missouri River and construction of the levees, people stayed back from the river's edge. The Corps began to stabilize the river by constructing dikes. This resulted in a much narrower, deeper, and swifter river more suitable for navigation. Channelization of the river through dike construction caused the formation of land behind the new dikes through the process of accretion. These accreted lands became usable in many cases for farming. 
The Corps then began to construct levees to protect the floodplain from flooding. While these changes to the river and its floodplain allowed for increased human use of the floodplain, they also adversely affected fish and wildlife by greatly reducing aquatic habitat acreage, causing less diversity and riparian areas along the river. These changes also resulted in an increase in flood heights. Records indicate that for a given discharge, flood heights have increased over the years, affecting all people in the floodplain. Man's changes to the dynamic river demonstrate that both adverse and positive benefits have resulted. Increased use of the floodplain by towns and agriculture, loss of shallow water and terrestrial habitat, and fish and wildlife populations, increased flood heights, all results of man's changes. Lewis and Clark's historic journey tracing the natural course of the mighty waters of the Missouri River led to the settlement of the Wild West frontier. Their epic discoveries paved the way for small towns and major cities to spring up along the banks of the Missouri. The river was first stabilized by the construction of long, permeable dikes, which encouraged the accretion of land within the dike field. The river was then further constricted by additional dikes, making it suitable for navigation. Over the past century, levees were constructed to protect riverfront communities from flooding. Controlling the river resulted in better flood protection and safer navigation, but it also eliminated much of the fish and wildlife habitat that once existed on the river's floodplain. Now the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is once again harnessing the natural power of the river to recreate fish and wildlife habitat, while at the same time maintaining a safe channel for river commerce and also providing increased flood protection for communities and farms along the river. Here's an existing typical profile of the way the river is today. The average distance from top bank to top bank is approximately 1,000 feet. In the early development profile, by purchasing land adjacent to the river, modifying structures, relocating the levee, then allowing water to flow out of the main channel and up against the bank, eventually eroding it and increasing the top width of the river. At the same time, areas of riparian forest and wetlands are planted. As the top width of the river increases, the area outside the 300-foot navigation channel diversifies creating sandbars and side channels, ideal for fish and wildlife habitat. The Missouri River Fish and Wildlife Mitigation Project is taking place in certain portions of the river within a 735-mile stretch from Sioux City, Iowa to St. Louis, Missouri. Currently, there are approximately 32 mitigation sites in this 735-mile river corridor flowing through Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, and Iowa. These individual publicly owned parcels of land are spread out along the entire river, representing about 25% of the overall mitigation program. The development of shallow water habitat will continue taking place over the next three decades on individual parcels of land purchased from willing sellers at fair market value. These separate shallow water mitigation sites spread out along the Missouri River collectively form alternating areas ideal for fish and wildlife. It's the string of pearls concept. Individual parcels of public land scattered along the entire river, developing shallow water habitat, the basis for the reestablishment of a viable Missouri River ecosystem. Now let's take a look at what a four mile section of the river will look like in this aerial animation. This animation shows the Missouri River of today and what the future may hold for portions of the river as a result of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Fish and Wildlife Mitigation Project. As shown in light blue, the goal is to first purchase sections of land in the floodplain from willing sellers at fair market value. Once the publicly owned mitigation land is acquired through mutual consent, some of the existing levees will be relocated further landward, increasing flood protection for communities and farms along the river. Dikes, highlighted in yellow, could then be modified, allowing a controlled flow of water to be redirected out of the main navigation channel onto the publicly owned mitigation lands. Also, side channels, highlighted in blue, could be cut allowing sandbars and other shallow water habitats to form, attracting fish and wildlife. 
A small volume of water would flow through the controlled structures onto the mitigation lands, allowing the water to meander and shift naturally as the river rises and falls, helping to restore a diverse fish and wildlife habitat by forming sandbars, pools, chutes, islands, and marshes. During the Corps' mitigation project, water volumes will be closely monitored to make sure authorized depths will be maintained in the Missouri River Navigation Channel. In this aerial animation, you get a bird's eye view of the future result of the mitigation project. Shown in green are areas of riparian forests established by the Corps. Wetlands shown in purple will also be established. The levee is shown as a red line. Over time, the natural action of the river will recreate shallow water areas and side channels shown in dark blue. Sandbars, emerging wetlands, and deep pools will also be recreated. The bank line is eroded, causing formation of shallow water areas shown in blue and sandbars shown in yellow. The mitigation plan will help to restore a portion of the Missouri River ecosystem, navigation, agriculture, communities, and natural areas all existing side by side, benefiting everyone through increased flood and levee protection, maintaining communities' agricultural production, and efficient river commerce. The challenge before the Corps is to restore the Missouri River's natural functions while at the same time maintaining the river's safe navigation channel and affording flood protection to communities 